Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching this. We are so happy you've joined us for Mount Calvary's daily devotion for Thursday, March 7th, day 18 of our Forgiveness Challenge. And we've been going through during this Lenten season, we are looking at the forgiveness of God for us and the forgiveness we are to have for one another. Pastor Zender today titles his day, Confession Helps Your Confession. And throughout this week, we've been looking at confession and how confession leads to forgiveness and forgiveness leads to freedom, leads to relationship, leads to the scars of Jesus. Well, today we talk about how confession leads to forgiveness and forgiveness leads to confession. What? Is it a circle? Is it a pattern that we go through? Somewhat. However, it's more than that. Because first, we have to know the two definitions of confess or confession that Pastor Zendo gives for us today. The first one is to say we did something wrong, that we have fallen short. The second one is to declare our religious faith. To declare a religious faith. That's the, it's not a cycle, but it's one to the other to the other. It's a progression. We come to God saying we've done something wrong, admitting we have fallen short. We receive the forgiveness of Jesus' body and blood, and we go out to confess our faith, to tell our faith, to tell our story, to talk about Jesus' scars or our scars to other people so they can connect more and they can become Christian. Today we're going to read a passage out of John chapter 4 starting at verse 16 and this is once again another popular story that you have probably heard before. It's about the woman at the well. And we're going to skip the first couple parts of the interaction, and I'll summarize them as need be. Well, we're going to start reading at verse 16. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem there is a place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, He who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with this woman. But no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, come See a man who has told me all I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of town and were coming to him. Confession leads to forgiveness. Forgiveness leads to confession. This woman is coming to the well in the middle of the day and at the time, the That was not customary. Many times, the men would go draw the water, but it would be an early morning before the sun was up, or late night when the sun was down. 
It was not in the middle of the day in the heat, but that's when this woman was going because she knew that no one would be there. I'm sure she had done this time, day after day, gone during this time, got her water and left without having to have conversation with anyone, without having to encounter anyone, without having to confess. But not today. Not on that day. She walked to the well and needless to say, she had the Messiah waiting on her. Because Jesus had an appointment with that woman at the well. And during their conversation, during their interaction, we learn that this woman is broken. Just like you and me. This woman has had five husbands. We don't know what's happened to them. We don't know they could be killed. They could have be divorced. We don't, we're not told what happened. But we know that she's broken. We know that she's guilty. We know that she is ashamed so much that she comes there in the worst part of the day just to get water for her to drink. However, Jesus has something much more than water from a well for her that day. And she confesses, I'm broken, I'm sinful. I've made many mistakes. Jesus tells her everything he knows and grants her forgiveness. And when she is granted forgiveness, the first thing she does is run into town and tell people about Jesus. Because she confessed what she had did wrong. She received the forgiveness from Jesus. And then she confessed her faith, her story to the town. You see, she didn't know the whole book of Concord. She didn't know everything there was to know about the Christian faith. She didn't need to know all the nuances. She knew Jesus. She knew that the Messiah had come, that forgiveness in flesh and blood was here. And that's all she needed to run into town. To run into town and share her faith. Someone who had been so ashamed to have any conversation. She'd go to the well in the middle of the day. Now she runs to find conversation. So she can tell people about Jesus Christ. So I have a question for each and every one of us. Do we know enough? Do we know Jesus? That's the simple question. And I'm not trying to dismiss the fact that we can always grow our faith. We can always learn more. We can always read the Bible. I encourage us all to do that. But do we know Jesus? Do we know enough to tell our neighbor about Christ? Do we know enough to share the gospel, to share the good news that is so simple yet so important. Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. He loves you and he forgives you. Amen. When we come to Jesus with confession, when we come saying, Lord, we have fallen short, we have messed up, we have done wrong, we are sorry. The forgiveness is not sometimes from God. The forgiveness is all the time. Every time from God. But then we are told not to just keep that forgiveness to ourselves. Not to keep the good news to ourselves. But to be like this woman. To go into the town. To go into the nations. And to confess our faith. To tell our faith. To tell our story of Jesus. So I'll ask you again, do you know enough? Do you know Jesus? When you confess your faith, you receive forgiveness. But let us go and make disciples of all nations.
let us go and confess our faith in Christ. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything you give us each and every day. Lord, we thank you for the clothes on our back, for the shelter on our heads, for the food in our belly. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, that we know him. And I pray that if we don't know him, Lord, we would come to know him. We would be reminded, Lord, that we are forgiven. We are given mercy. We are made new in your Son. And Lord, grant us the courage, grant us the faith to go and to confess our faith to everyone we come in contact with, Lord. I pray you'd be with us, guide us, lead us, and protect us this day, and bring us back tomorrow. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you again tomorrow.